Hey, Justin. Football's back, baby. Yeah. All right, let's talk about a guy that doesn't get talked about enough. Chandler Jones had an absolutely monster day today. Monster. Monster. So Chandler Jones had five sacks, and uh, he hit 102 sacks total for his career. Taylor Luan was all laying all day. Oh, AJ, laying all day. All day. Matador. Full-on full Matador mode full today. Full-on Matador. A.J. Brown was held to 49 yards, and Julio was held to 29. Uh, well, okay, in Taylor uh, Lewan's defense, we're going to talk about Julio and A.J. Brown because those people absolutely need to be talked about. He's coming off an ACL injury. However, with that said, this doesn't look good for the Titans. No, and their defense was an absolute sieve all day, you know, and their offensive line wasn't able to protect Ryan Tannehill at all. No. Ch- Chandler Jones not only had five sacks, he had two forced fumbles. Oh, actually, I didn't, I didn't see those. Yeah, and so... Even Taylor Luan after the game was like, I played like shit. And we're like, yes, you did. Shout, shout out to him. You know, it was being accountable. I do have respect for that. But yeah. the fact of the matter is he did play like shit. So let's talk about the acquisition that they made that every Titans fan in the world was freaking out about this year. Julio Jones had 29 yards on three catches. Um, That's what scientists like to say is not very good. Not good. But I'll say on the other side... Kyler Murray had four touchdowns. Yeah, dude, Kyler Murray looked really, really good. He had good. a step back throw to Rondell Moore that was absolutely insane. Yeah, his hezzy, dude. The hezzy was. He ran back, ran across the field another 50 yards, looked at the defender, stepped forward, did a step back, and threw it. It's football. Yeah, dude, that was sick. That was like a Steph Curry like move. He was playing it, literally playing it. You know when people are like, dude, he's playing a different sport? He was literally playing a different sport out there. Yeah, I know. He's out there, innovator, changing the game. I'll say this. Cliff Kingsbury's offense looks very, very good right now. Like, I think we kind of starting to see what he can do with an offense. But I mean, yeah, I mean, we're starting to see what he can do. But I mean, let's, you know, also like, you know, he had a whole summer to plan for this one. game, So I'll give him that. Yeah. So. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about another uh, young QB uh, that um, didn't really have a very good. Also did not have a very good online blocking for him today. Zach Wilson. That was so bad. So bad. Like, like not just bad, like really, really bad. That guy was running for his life the whole time. I, and he showed a lot of uh, a lot of promise today. He, You know what he looked like out there? You're going to say it. You're going to say Sam it. Sam Darnold. Well, I, oh, I thought you were going to say Patrick Mahomes. He, look, the way he, <laughs> look, when I talk about how he looks like Patrick Mahomes, I am talking about arm angles. He throws the ball like a baseball. The way base- he, I will say the way he scrambles is very comparable. I, I agree. But here's the difference is because... And I played quarterback at a very low level. I'll be very clear about that. But JV All Star over here, guys. Quarterbacks throw like this. Zach Wilson. Wait, wait. How'd that go one more time? Zach Wilson and Patrick Mahomes technique. throw like this, like a baseball. They throw like a baseball, and that's why they have such weird arm angles and can launch the ball like at different speeds and different velocities and different angles because they throw differently. But at the same time, he was running. He ran six miles today. He ran six miles. Easily. 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 It was hard to watch. And then Mecky Becton goes down. And you're like, oh, dude. He, he so might have even covered like a hectare. <laughs> that. It perhaps, was, perhaps some nautical miles. I didn't know what that was. That's why I was going to gloss. But I'm not that smart. I, I, I'm not. I honestly, I don't think that was the proper way to use that word either. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but it's. Uh, Darnold, I'll say in that game, though, <laughs> the Panthers honestly started to take controls. Darnold looked really good. He looked really comfortable. And yeah, I mean, he had some moments where he had happy feet. Maybe those ghosts, they came back. Yeah, but I'll, I'll say, dude, he had a touchdown. You know, his QBR was over 100. Like, he completed, like, sixty over 65% of his passes. He looked really good today, and they won. And, yeah, and one thing also needs to get talked about is the Panthers quietly have, like, a top three receiver. Uh, um, well, yeah, but just between DJ Moore, uh, they drafted Terrace Marshall, who's going to be a beast, and they got Robbie Anderson. Like, th- those are three really good receivers those are two 1000 yard receivers and a really good rookie they're, they're a good offensive line away from being deadly absolutely yeah. i actually really agree with that that's yeah. that's very that's probably their, that's easily their biggest weakness it, oh and they have that guy cmc at running back exactly yeah that helps a little but bit i'll say this zach wilson looked really good like he looked good he had no protection so you kind of feel bad but like with the like it was wild how little protection he had and he still was really effective like, don't get me wrong. Like, he didn't win the game. They, they were straight raw dogging it with him. Yeah. Honestly. It, honestly, they just sent him out there. 
Um, but, you know, he still threw for two touchdowns and looked solid, made some crazy plays. But, you know what I mean? Like, the team's not good. No, the, it, so it is objectively a shitty that, team. That's kind of what you expect. And yeah. that kind of brings me to another rookie, rookie on a very bad team. Yeah. That won today, though. Yeah. Against another very bad team. Dude, I, I think, yeah, okay, he had his welcome to the NFL moment today. But also, getting drafted by the Jaguars, he wasn't oh, was exactly... Oh shit! I was talking well because no, we're talking right. about rookie because you're, right. you, you're talking about rookie QBs. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Let's talk okay. about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, and so well because he wasn't exactly when he was getting drafted by the Jaguars. He wasn't exactly getting the keys to a Rolls Royce. Not at all. He's getting like a '90s Impala. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah and, and on top of it, Etienne just With went 180, down. With 180,000 miles. Yeah, and the uh, and Urban Meyer, that whole situation's not exactly going very it well. Sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it sounds really, really bad. That's that's a topic for a whole different video. But let's talk Trevor Lawrence. Trevor had three touchdowns, but he also had three picks. Yeah, and, and, and sorry, and pl- please excuse Justin's voice cracks uh, right now. Uh, he was just choking us. I was ago. literally choking. Right yeah, before he, this he almost he almost died. But yeah. he's a, but he's a trooper. He's 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 dedicated to the pod. But I have acid reflux. Yeah, yeah but dude, let's Trevor see. Lawrence, bro. Okay, okay. Yes, he threw three interceptions. Two of them were egregiously bad. But he also threw for 330 yards in his very first game in the NFL in three touchdowns. Yeah, uh, and and honestly, he also targeted DJ Shark like 12 times, and he only caught like three balls. So that's not all, all on Trevor. Like, it's that's not, not all, all on Trevor. Trevor. So, is, like, yeah. he played well. Like, he threw three picks, and two of them that were brutal. You, you can't really ask him to do that much more with the cards that he's been dealt. But the thing is, the Texans look competent. Yeah. They looked really competent. Yeah. Ty- Tarod played amazing. He had two touchdowns, like 280 yards. Like, dude, Tyrod doesn't throw for that many yards ever. In his never, career. never, yeah, never in his career. He rushed for more yards than he throws for usually. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But yeah. Yeah, it, it, don't get me wrong. He, he's always been a really good game manager. Tyrod's not gonna. He's not gonna throw three interceptions in a game. No, and that's kind of where Tyrod like lies. Like, if if you need, if you have a really good roster and you have like a rookie. Then yeah, he's great. He's a mentor. He's, like he's a, a good he's guy. Like an athletic Alex Smith. And you know what? Everyone's always said phenomenal locker room guy. Super easy to get along with. One of the best teammates ever had. Yeah. You can't go wrong when you have a guy like that. You know the other guy that they had, the exact opposite apparently. But yeah, like I totally <laughs> kind of see where like Tarad came in and he came into a really shitty situation and played really well, like almost immediately. All right. So, so Jamar. Jamar. Uh, Jamar. So we're gonna talk about Jamar. Uh, Chase, he had a 50-yard touchdown catch, which was absolutely phenomenal. Burrow looked awesome. The Bengals looked awesome. The Vikings looked horrendous. That, that's a sentence that I did not think I would be saying this year, is that the Bengals look awesome. And they, and they kind of did. Dude, they Joe Mixon did. ran for over 120 yards. Dude, they had several receivers with more than three catches. Like, that's a good game. The, they, they hung in there like a good team, They too. won. Yeah, obviously that's what yeah. I, yeah you know yeah. like cuz the good teams when when you're when you when you're putting up points of, like against a team like obviously the Vikings aren't exactly very good but like you know they're they're battling and I didn't expect to see them be doing that this year so yeah hey, you know good for you Bengals you guys got something you got something going right I will also say I am one of those guys that every season I'm like the Vikings got some guys their defense will be good it's no. it hasn't been good in years horrendous dude it's so bad horrendous it's so bad. All right. So, um, but yeah, so, but you know, shout out to, uh, Let's talk about the other horrendous, uh, outing from a very famous person. Well, wh- I, which I one? To, I, well, I feel like, well, we kind of had a couple, but we're going to talk I about Rogers. I really want to talk about cause he played horribly. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that, that, the, okay. Before we have overreaction Sunday. Okay. Like th- I agree. this is I agree. Aaron Rodgers does this every year where he has a game or two where he just totally shits the bed. Yeah. And here's my thing too. is like, you're like, Oh, you didn't throw four touchdowns and have 75% completion percentage? Oh, he's declining. He's declining. It's like, bro, chill Dude, out. I, and one, one of, you, you know this. One of my favorite things to do is to go onto the Instagram page of the team that's losing just because the comments are so fun to read. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was reading it, and I'm like, Packers fans are like saying it's like, Oh, he's not committed. He's checked out. Like, dude, stop it. This is Aaron Rodgers. This guy is like an objective top five quarterback of all time. You know what I mean? Disrespectful. Like, stop it. Like, this guy, like, maybe if he does that 10 more times this season, then sure. But that's not going to happen. No. That's not going to happen. And he's not going to just check out after he made this whole stink and then play like shit. It's not going to happen. 
He's like, he's gone after this year. He's like, I'm going to go try to win the Super Bowl and then dip. That's what he's doing. Everyone knows that. And that's not going to happen, but you know, dude, the, the Packers scored three points. <laughs> yeah. Packers scored three uh, fucking points. Dude, that's a, dude, which was honestly pretty much a neutral location. Arguably, maybe a home game for the Packers just because there's so many Packers fans in other well, states. Yeah, they couldn't play in New Orleans because, you know. Of course. And, 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 you know, shout out to the Jaguars for letting the Saints use their stadium. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, but, the, uh, but the quarterback on the other side of the field looked pretty damn good. Jameis threw for five touchdowns with only 148 yards. Jameis Winston had 12 com- or 14 completions. Five of those were touchdowns. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And he ran for like sixty something yards. Yeah, it, it, dude, it's not, that's not what you expect when with Jameis Winston. You're like five touchdowns. Wait, so he threw five interceptions too, right? Yeah, yeah. Three of those were pick sixes, right? Yeah, three of those were pick sixes. Not none of those were pick sixes. In fact, they he didn't even throw a single interception. He didn't throw game. a single pick all game. Dude, that's that's a good. Yeah, that's a really good sign. And I, I, I thought the Saints were gonna stink this year. Uh, th- but honestly, they they returned more guys than uh, than the media made it seem like because they had this fire sale where they had to give away you know like the eight guys or something. And yeah. Like I want to say six or seven of them were Pro Bowlers. That doesn't help, but they're still going to be good. This is uh, they have Sean Payton as their coach. Or they're no joke. Yeah, Sean. That, that's one of the things is Sean Payton's a top five coach in the league every year, and like you're, you're dumb if you think he's any been different. consistent for like fifteen years. Mm-hmm. So it's like. I, I, like, if you doubt him at this point, it's kind of like, I guess because of the Breeze thing, but still, like, Breeze wasn't playing well, and they still made the playoffs, so. All right, so out of everything that we've talked about today, what do you think is the biggest story? What, what do you think is just, like, the thing that pops out at you the most? Dude, Zach Wilson. Well, I would say Chandler Jones having five sacks and two forced fumbles, but Zach Wilson, bro, if you watch the tape, it's hard to watch, dude. It's yeah. not him. It's the fact that he, the second he gets the ball, he's not even looking downfield. He's looking to run because he knows he's going to have no time. It, it, well, yeah, it's it's not his fault that he's not looking downfield. He doesn't have he doesn't have a Corey Lindsley blo- blocking for him. He doesn't have Quentin Nelson. He has a bunch of guys. Mekki Becton was probably their best he lineman, got- and on PFF, he's ranked like a hundredth. No, he's he's actually not bad, but okay. it's like, but he was hurt. But he's hurt. He got hurt. Like how? Yeah. Like like a quarter into the game, he got hurt. He yeah. twisted his leg and he was down the. Well, he did. He he didn't get carted off, did he? He didn't get carted off. Yeah, but it, it looked. Yeah, but he it, it looked, the rest of the game. But it looked bad. It, it looked doesn't, really bad. It doesn't tell me that he's going to be coming back next Sunday. Yeah, and on top of it, here's the thing: they were bad with him. They were bad with him. They were really bad with they him. They were, and and Elijah Vera Tucker, they reached for him by drafting him. Yeah. And they thought bringing Morgan Moses in, who was like the 18th best tackle in the league last year, was going to solve the right tackle problem. It fucking didn't. And, and, getting, he's, and he's not getting fucking, any. He's not getting any younger either. Dude, you, they got their fucking shit pushed in, bro. It was rough to watch. In my opinion, I uh, just as someone that used to play uh, d- defense and offensive line. Fun fact: uh, I used to weigh 80 more pounds than I do right now. Uh, so when I say that I played Dino line, that's what I mean. But dude, five sacks in a game and two forced fumbles. I don't care who you're going against. The, these are NFL tackles. That's fucking ridiculous. And it was against a three-time Pro Bowl. And against a three-time. like. And here's the thing. Yeah, sure, he's coming off an ACL injury. But ACL injuries are not what they were 30 years ago. An ACL injury, you're back in nine months. You're Really? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Like yeah. and so like I don't really want to hear like the oh he was hurt like or like he was set back so much by his ACL injury that it solicited reasoning for him to give up five sacks. Yeah, dude. he even knew that five sacks. He tweeted it. You saw the tweet, right? Yeah, dude. Most I'd say probably the average team gives up maybe forty to fifty sacks a season. You know? Oh, uh, I mean, if you're really good, like thirty five. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 50, yeah, 50 to fair. 60. And so he gave up 10%, 10% of, of a season sack 16, single-handedly. There's 16 more games. Single-handedly by one guy. There's 16 more games. Uh, he's got to he's gotta get that shit figured out. Uh, and also, Titans fans, um, I, I would say this is like an 8 out of 10 worry right now. Frauds. Yeah, frauds. Frauds. Um, but, you know. Sorry, Uncle hey, Brad. Hey, but Justin, you know what's most important here? Football's back. Football's back. Football's back. Fans are back. We fucking beat COVID. Let's do it, baby. 16 more games. Fuck yeah. All right. Thanks for watching.